We are here today with Tom Campbell, author of My Big Toe, A Big Theory of Everything, physicist and consciousness researcher. Tom, a few years back, someone asked you, what would your equation be? Einstein has E equals MC squared. And you gave out more of an identity of R equals I which is reality equals information. Now your theory centers on virtual reality. How can we apply this to our everyday life? R equals I. How can you handle information in your life and make your life better? Well, information is what defines reality. So the R equals I is an identity. It's a, it's a it's identity between reality and information. Given that we are in a virtual reality, that means that we, as consciousness, are getting a data stream. A data stream is just information. It's a stream of data. We receive that data stream and we interpret it to be something we react to that something, and our reaction then, we send back to the computer, who's computing the virtual reality, and the computer then implements our reaction as far as the, the uh, avatar goes. Makes the avatar, you know, jump or smile or cry or, you know, do a somersault or whatever, the, whatever our reaction is, then that reaction gets uh, displayed by our avatar. Okay, now virtual reality has the player, the consciousness, the body, which is the character that the, that the consciousness is playing, the avatar, all right, and the computer. Those are all the elements of a virtual reality. So if this is a virtual reality, then we have a data stream. We are the player. We're consciousness. We make the choices. The body responds to the choices that we make. So if we decide to stand up and run, then that's our choice. And sure enough, our image of our body stands up and runs because we're the choice maker. We're the player in this virtual reality game. We're not the body. That's the avatar. We just make the choices. The consciousness can only do as much with that avatar as the rule set that defines the game allows. So the consciousness may say, well, avatar, flap your arms and fly. Well, that won't work in our case, unless we're birds. But if our avatar is a human, that won't work because the rule set doesn't support humans flapping their arms and flying. So the consciousness can't do anything it wants to with the avatar. It has to abide by the rule sets of the game and the computer will only compute the avatar doing those things that abide by the rule set. So that's the, that's the game we're in. So now the, the reality that we see, which is the, the reality where our avatar is getting up and running, okay, that's the reality. That's just information. It's information in our data stream. There is no body. There is no human. There is no world. There is no set. There are no rocks and rivers and trees and thunderstorms and grass growing in the yard and houses. All of that is virtual. Okay, that's what it means to be in a virtual reality. The actuality is that we are consciousness getting a data stream and that data defines our reality. And that's why R equals I. Reality equals information in a virtual reality. Now, as units of consciousness, we can attach ourselves or we can get multiple data streams. We dream at night. That's a different data stream. We get to make choices in that dream, just like we do when we're in the awake part of our existence in this virtual reality. So those are just different data streams. If indeed uh, we'd like to, uh, you know, uh, zip around through space or go flying uh, along the tree line, you know, near the mountains, 
we can do that too if we can also get a data stream that shows us that picture. Okay, just like you can take your, your L for your player in a virtual reality game and climb up on a big animal with wings and go flying. And now you look down at the ground and you can see the rivers and rocks and stones and streams coming up and disappearing quickly because you're flying. You're going much faster than if you were walking or running. So you will experience whatever the data is that's in your data stream. So that's why information equals reality. Now, how do we deal with this information? Well, we, of course, get so much information that it's hard for us to deal logically with it all. We have to filter that information. We've got, you know, a hundred different sources of information on almost everything, you know, from our news to our economy, you know, to what our friends are doing, to our family. We have all this information, plus the, the information about the physical world, you know, the house we're living in, does the roof leak, uh, you know, how cold is it outside? This is all information that we have to, we have to accept and then deal with. Okay, that's the way life is. Things happen and we get to deal with them. How we deal with them, the choices we make in dealing with them is what's important, not so much in what happens. So with all these sources of information competing with each other for our attention, we have to make judgments. We have to make choices. So what information are we going to pay attention to and what are we going to let's let go? Okay. We never have enough information to make a logical choice because you don't really know what's in that information stream that you're going to let go of unless you don't let go of it and receive it. Then you know exactly what was in it. So in arrears, you can always judge what you should have done. You can get that information stream and say, oh, that was useless. Uh, none of that was helpful. I shouldn't have listened to that, but you already have listened to it in order to find out that you shouldn't have. So when we try to make these, these uh, choices about what we should do, in the future, should I listen to this or should I not? We don't have enough information to make a logical choice. So we have to guess. We have to make judgments. Those judgments are based on our past experience. Okay? But there's a problem here and there's a solution to the problem. The problem is that if we make these judgments and begin to believe that the judgments are correct. That's a problem. Because then these judgments will turn into beliefs. And then we'll start making our judgments based on our beliefs. And when you do that, you've just cut yourself off from a lot of possibilities. Okay. Now, that's what most people do. They turn their judgments into beliefs and from then on, they don't have to worry about that particular data stream because they either believe that it's a good one and they'll listen to it or they believe that's a bad one and they'll ignore it. No more wondering about it. It's done. Okay. Life isn't like that. It's not that tidy. What you should do instead is use open-minded skepticism. You should be skeptical of every data source. Even if it's your mother, you should be skeptical of every data source and realize that sometimes a data source can be very helpful and sometimes not. And that in some of those data sources that you may not want to listen to, you may not be getting some very useful information there because you really don't know what's in it. So with that skepticism, about what's useful and what's not, you still have to make your choices because there's too much. There's a hundred data sources all want your attention now. You have to make judgments. But don't believe that the judgments that you make are necessarily correct. Make your judgments with the idea that, well, this is what I'm going to do now, but I'll keep my mind open about those other sources. 
I may just kind of randomly sample those sometimes to see if there isn't something in there that's useful. And just because I've picked this as kind of a favorite data source doesn't mean that what I get is going to be useful or that it's going to be right. I need to stay skeptical. Even though I've found that this particular source to be a really good source, believing that it's always going to be a good source and that all the information you ever get from that one is going to be really good, that's a mistake. Stay skeptical. And vice versa, just because a source has been a poor source doesn't mean that it won't be very useful some other time, some other way. So we need to come up with a set of probabilities. Well, here's the way I think I'll maximize my time and my attention is by looking at these data sources and not those. But don't believe it. Don't believe that that is the final answer. Always stay open. Always make it tentative. Always keep your eye open and your ear open for those other sources and see what might be there. Sample them from time to time. And always question what you get from those favorite sources that you just kind of believe because they tell you what you want to hear. It may be that some of those sources you discount are telling you things you don't want to hear, but you really need to know and you really need to deal with. So you have to always reassess the source all the time, reassess yourself and reassess the, the usefulness of the information to you. It would be a, a great loss to you if you get trapped in a belief, only listen to sources that told you what you wanted to hear and never ever grew up, never changed, never became more, never actualized your potential because all you do is listen to the things that tell you that you're just fine just the way you are because that sounds good to you and your ego likes that. So you see, we need to be skeptical and we need to always be uh, assessing and reassessing what's important to us and what's not. Is it important that we watch the news for an hour every day? Or is it not really important? Is it important that we, you know, call our mother on the phone three times a day or twice a day or once a week or once a year or whatever it is we decide to do? Is that a good thing? Maybe we should do it more. Maybe we should do it less. You see, always be reassessing what you're doing and why you're doing it. That's the, that's the key. So how do you deal with information? Well, you have to make judgments, do the best you can based on your past, but don't believe that your judgments are perfect and right. Don't turn those judgments into beliefs. That would be a big mistake. And that is what most of us do. And we end up isolating ourselves from the information that we really need to hear and spending most of our time walling around in the information that makes us feel good. It's not only what do I want to hear, but why do I want to hear it? What is the value to my growth? Not what is the value to my ego and what makes me feel good, but what is valuable to my growing up? Where are the choices that will mean something to me? You know, where do they lie? Just making your ego feel good doesn't really provide you with any choices other than the fact that you are missing out on the stuff that's important. So always question why. Why do I want to listen to the news for an hour every day? Why do I want to call my mother you know, on the phone every evening? Why do I do this? And the answer may be, well, it's a really good thing to do. Your mom needs that. Or maybe you need that. You know, it just depends. It's not any particular thing that's good or bad. It's the intent. It's the reason why. So that's the, that's the key. It's not the thing itself. It's the intention. Why are you doing it? And is that something that's leading to your growth or not? If not, then it's probably something you could do away with. Unless maybe it's leading to somebody else's growth. And then you might keep it up just for them. Thank you very much, Tom.